those who uh, have not met me yet, uh, my name is Ashley Poy and I'm the chair uh, of the organizing committee for this year's Education Roundtable on Asian Wisdom Traditions. I uh, came up with this idea to do a series of events on various Asian spiritual practices this year because of my own personal experiences. Uh, about 20 years ago, I began practicing Zen Buddhist meditation. Subsequently, through my practice, I came to an understanding that all the world's wisdom traditions, in my personal view, are all pointing to a similar, if not exactly the same reality. I experience like a bicycle wheel, where each spoke represents a different wisdom tradition that exists on this planet. They all each have their own unique expression, but ultimately they're all pointing to the same reality. At least that's the way that I experienced it. While I was at UFT doing my masters in East Asian studies, I also I picked up a few books on Sufism, and when I read it. I just related to it right away. There was nothing, uh, I, um, how would I say, strange or incomprehensible to me. It all just felt so familiar. And so I really felt that connection. And so this afternoon, uh, I have the pleasure of uh, introducing Reza Tabande, who is currently studying uh, for his PhD at University of, pardon me? Oh, postdoctorate excuse me, um, at University of Toronto and studying Sufism. And uh, he today will be doing our presentation, feature presentation on the Sufism. And as well, we are, I'm personally very excited to also uh, experience the presentation that the Canadian Sufi Center uh, is going to uh, be sharing with us out in the courtyard after uh, Reza's presentation uh, here in the theater. So without further ado, I would like to um, ask uh, Reza to come up to the stage. Thank you. In the name of the beloved, thank you all for coming. Today I would like to introduce Sufism to you. To begin with, let's read a poem from Ibn Arabi. My heart can take on any form, a meadow for gazelles, a cloister for monks, for idols sacred ground. Kaaba for the circling pilgrims, the table of the Torah, the scrolls of the Quran. I profess the religion of love. Wherever its caravan turns along the way, that is the belief, the faith I keep. Uh, in my talk, I tried to avoid mentioning names, dates, uh, academic terminologies and I tried to keep it as simple as possible. I also refer to uh, different Sufi poets and Sufi philosophers to clarify my points. Mysticism exists in all religions and mysticism is the human experience of the divine. Therefore love and emotion are always involved in mysticism. In Islam, this mysticism is called Sufism. Sufis have more focus on inner aspect of Islam. Many Sufis and well-known scholars like Professor Nasr named Sufism as the heart of Islam. Heart is where love grows. So Sufism is actually the religion of love. This does not mean that they created a new religion, but an emotional movement within Islamic culture. Rumi says, I profess the religion of love. Love is my religion and my faith. My mother is love. My father is love. My prophet is love. 
My God is love. I am a child of love. I have come only to speak of love. Now I, could, I would like to take, you, take your attention toward this important point in Sufism. Sufis believe that it is possible to have love relationship with God instead of being a slave or a slave and master relationship. There are lots and lots of Sufi stories and poetry about love and beloved relationship with God. Among all, I, choo I choo chose a poem from Rumi that explained a little bit of this love. Being a lover means your heart must ache. No sickness hurts as much as when hearts break. The lover's ailments totally unique. Love is the astral love of all we seek. Whether you feel divine or earthly love, ultimately we are destined for above. To capture love, whatever words I say make me ashamed when love arrives my way. While explanation sometimes makes things clear, true love through silence only one can hear. The pen would smoothly write the things it knew. But when it came to love, it splits in two. A donkey stuck in mud is logic's fate. Love's nature, only love can demonstrate. What are the Sufi stations? A novice entering to a Sufi path needs to go through different station to reach the ultimate goal of Sufism. There are different explanations, classifications, and terminologies for these stations in Sufi path. But I will explain it in the simplest possible way. An novice journey starts with a feeling of a spiritual thirst. Through a spirituality, a novice starts to search inner peace and tranquility. A novice becomes seeker of the truth. Let's read a poem together about seeking a station. Thus, seeking's a blessed action that can slay and wipe out obstacles stood in the way to things you long for. Seeking is the key. It is your army's flag and victory. This seeking is just like a cock that crows. When dawn arrives, so everybody knows. Keep seeking. Lack of means should not be ignored. Should be ignored. You need no tools when traveling to the Lord. Befriend those you see searching, son and bow your head down in devotion to them now. By mixing with them, you will turn to a searcher. Through a conqueror's shadow, you will become a conqueror. After, seeker will find a Sufi saint, a spiritual guide, through the spiritual signs that he or she receives in the path. This Sufi saint is an enlightened guide for the novice. A Sufi saint can be compared to Bodhisattva, who has reached the state of enlightenment and have returned from the state of enlightenment to the humanity to guide others. Having a spiritual master in Sufi path is a must, according to Rumi, as he says, Write down about the guide, what I now say, and choose him. He is the essence of the way. The guides the summer, others autumn blight. He is like the moon, while they are the dark at night. North Star is an unchanging star that guides everyone during dark nights. In Christianity, North Star is a metaphor used for Christian doctrines and even Jesus Christ himself as guides from the darkness. 
In Sufism, moon is used to show you the path during a dark night. This dark night is a material world that we live in and moon is the guide which illuminates or pass from darkness. Sufi masters have motherly love toward their disciple. I said motherly love because the term mother is used for Sufi saints. However, I should mention that in the world of Sufism, they go beyond sexuality. But they use the term motherly love because this love is the strongest love in the whole world. Therefore, a saint with a motherly care takes the hand of a wayfarer and teaches how to walk in the path of divine love. Sufis believe that through the inculcation of different spiritual practices by the master, a novice can gain gnosis. There are a number of different practices. However, the remembrance of God, known as dhikr, is the most important spiritual practice which is accepted by all Sufi orders. These practices help a wayfarer to reach the ultimate goal. Dhikr is a fundamental spiritual practice and meditation by Sufis, which, which must be constant, and there are a number of different ways of practicing dhikr. The two most important division of remembrance, or dhikr, uh, which is uh, our uh, silent dhikr, which is more based on meditation in mind and uh, meditating on breathing. And the second type is a loud dhikr, which is more practice in Sufi lodges and in group, and it is accompanied with chanting. Uh, sema is another spiritual practice by Sufis. In the West, it is known as whirling, which is not the only way of practicing Sama. The literal meaning of Sama means listening, which refers to listening to the rhyme and rhythm of music, zek, and even nature. But by, by recognizing this harmony and rhythm, you should automatically remember God, how creation is harmonious. And for example, if you look at a tree and a wind is blowing over the leaves, by the movement of the leaves and the sound, it is Sama for you because you remember God. You see the rhythm in the, in the uh, leaves. Creation is ha in harmony is Sama. <coughs> However, whirling dervishes are the formalized and ritual whirling uh, or whirling dervishes who are uh, part of Mevlavi order, are the, uh, they have their own practice of whirling, which is a more formalized and ritualized way of Sama. And it is interesting that each, uh, hum in Sufi philosophy, each human is a microcosm, whereas in Sama, when you reach the state of union, you represent the macrocosm. And while you are whirling, you hold one hand up and one hand down, receiving from divinity, and giving it to the humanity. What is the ultimate goal of uh, Sufism? To reach Gnosis, and through Gnosis, when one can be annihilated in the divine. Annihilation is the union with the beloved. This state is called a fana, which is translated as ex extinction or annihilation. And it is equivalent of reaching a state of nirvana in Buddhism. And not 100% equivalent, but it's similar to the reaching of the state of nirvana in Buddhism and moksha in Hinduism. <coughs> Bistami, there are sayings in the state of union uh, which are called chatiyat, uh, and it has been translated as intoxicated utterances. Bistami says, I am my beloved. My beloved is I. If you see me, you see us both. Two spirits in one flesh. 
clothed by Allah in a single body. Also, Hallaj used to say an al haq which means I am the truth. These were intoxicated saying out of being in union with your beloved God. So, uh, and if you can see in this miniature, Hallaj was executed because these sayings were unbearable for uh, mainstream Muslims and it was outrageous. So they executed Hallaj for uttering uh, an al haq Sufis believe that once a wafer reached a state of union, he or she will recognize the unity. And through this unity, one can understand that everything is the manifestation of divine. Religions become evolutional. And uh, uh, it ends to the unity of all religions. If you look at the philosophy, uh, mystical philosophy of Sufism, they believe that the light of guidance was created before the creation of the earth. They call it Muhammadan reality or Muhammadan right, light. They believe it was the first emanation from God. And after humanity was created, it was endowed in the heart of each prophet coming down to the time of Prophet Muhammad. And it was perfected by Prophet Muhammad. The one who recognized this in all religions sees the light of the beloved. So there won't be any hatred. As Hafiz of Shiraz says, let's forgive the 72 sects for their ridiculous wars and misbehaviors because they couldn't accept the path of truth. They took the road of moonshine. And when you recognize everything through Allah, through God, you will become like Bistami, as Bistami said, I recognize Allah through Allah. And I recognize what was below Allah through the light of Almighty Allah. And Sadi of Shiraz says, I am married with the one whom the world is married. I am in love with the whole universe, because the whole universe is from him. So beside this evolutional view about religion, also in creation, they have this philosophy of unity of every being. They believe that everything is a manifestation of God. So if everything is manifestation of love, automatically you cannot hate it. Because if you love God and God is your beloved, then you cannot ha hate his manifestation. And there is a story uh, about uh, Rabia, one of the great Sufi masters. They asked her if you hate Satan. And she said, there is no place of hatred. I am so filled with the love of God. There is no place for hatred in my heart. So that is what is real Sufism. Therefore, we all need Sufism in today's world to create love, unity, and rescue humanity from materialization and hatred. I am done talking. To round it up, let's listen to a poem together. <laughs> Is it your face that adorns this garden? Is it your fragrance that intoxicates this garden? Is it your spirit that has made this brook a river of wine? Hundreds have looked for you and died searching in this garden where you hide behind the scenes. But this pain is not for those who come as lovers. You are easy to find here. You are in the breeze and in this river of wine. Thank you very much. <laughs>